This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Get the CuriosityStream Nebula Bundle deal for an all-time low sale price of $1 a month at curiositystream.com slash H-A-I. So, in the late 1970s, the dastardly Sandinistas came to power in Nicaragua and decided to do something evil and, frankly, rather disgusting. Provide education for all the children. This cruel, red-led literary crusade forced kids out of the household and into life-size centers for kids who can't read good, which resulted not only in kids reading gooder, but also in them developing a new language from scratch. You see, until the 1970s, Nicaragua had no real deaf community, which meant isolated deaf children's only means of communication were whatever rudimentary, mimic-styled signs they invented to communicate needs to their usually hearing families. But then, the Sandinistas took deaf 4 to 16 year olds, put them together in the country's first deaf schools, and brought in Eastern German educators to teach the kids Spanish Sign Language, which mostly involved teaching them how to use letter signs to spell out Spanish words. This wasn't very useful, though, largely because the deaf kids had never been taught to read, so they didn't have a clear concept of what a word was, or what a letter was, and also importantly, they did not speak Spanish, because again, they were deaf. Rather than listening with their eyes to how their teachers wanted them to communicate, the children did something far cooler and half as interesting -er. They started to communicate amongst themselves. Because of the unusual confluence of circumstances — they were all coming from isolated villages without knowing how to read and without ever being taught to speak any other language — that meant they had to invent a completely new language from scratch at the same age as when most of us were putting crayons into places they didn't belong. Now, it's tough to identify when a new language is taking shape right in front of your eyes, but luckily for us, the ignored and unsuccessful teachers called for backup. Unable to get through to the children, but recognizing that the kids were communicating with one another, Nicaraguan education officials brought in a cunning American linguist, Judy Kegel, in 1986 to figure out what the kids were talking about. To make sense of what these kids were saying in a language disconnected from any established Kegel basically had to make a Rosetta Stone to get the kids to communicate something in their sign language that she already knew in her own language. So, preempting the 8 million movie recap podcast that now plagued the world, she showed each student a 90 second cartoon and then filmed them describing what they had just watched. Once she translated it, she had two findings. First, this language wasn't just a bunch of vocab bundled together. This language had rules. Take, for example, their sign for speak. At first, it was simple — a hand opening and closing in front of their mouth. But then they changed it so that they would start the sign with the hand open at the speaker's position, but move it forward to the position of the person being addressed, where they would close it. That little motion is a huge deal. By incorporating information about the subject and object of a verb, the kids had intuited the concept of verb agreement, which is pretty impressive considering that you, the viewer, do not know what verb agreement is. The second thing she found was that the older children, the original architects of this whole language, leaned on rather rudimentary signing — only a few signs to describe the whole clip, while the younger students signed more complicated, time-sensitive summaries of the cartoon. This told her that the language was growing and maturing from one generation to the next. Ultimately, she was able to separate the language's development into three stages. First were the home signs, a few basic signs, usually just acting something out, that each kid had developed in their own individual home with their usually hearing parents. When the deaf kids came together, though, they sort of combined all their home signs to develop a basic pigeon — not the kind Pierce Morgan fed in Home Alone 2, but a limited, simplified language traditionally used to communicate between people who don't share a common language. That basic pidgin was called Lenguaje de Signos Nicaragüense, which according to Google translates to about 899,000 results. But the key component came next. Younger students came in, quickly mastered the basic pidgin developed by the older students, and then without even meaning to, elevated it to a real, full-on language which linguists called the idioma, or Nicaraguan Sign Language. Now, all this suggested that groups of young children possess a semi-mythical, unconscious, and incredibly powerful ability to not only understand, but develop language. Something that we kind of already knew based on how good kids are at coming up with new ways to make fun of adults. By continually communicating with each other, adjusting, and innovating, they came to consensus about adopting new signs, dropping others, and developing a grammatical system. 
It's one of humankind's most remarkable abilities, rivaled only by the ability to eat 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Because people can never just let a nice thing be nice, this example was quickly jumped on by experts to prove various linguistic theories, including the highly controversial concept of innate speaker capacity. It's a theory developed by linguist and anarchist Dumbledore Noam Chomsky, which argues that grammar is in part a function of innate human genetics, that there is a universal grammar programmed into our DNA, which in part explains both why children are so incredibly good at learning language and why all human languages share relatively similar structures. In the end, the point is that I couldn't think of a good ending for this video, so here's the sign the kids came up with for Raccoon. While I don't know any other cool vocab or how to end my videos, I do know that we made a Nebula Plus companion video to this compiling all the jokes we cut because they were lame, rude, or too long. I also know that CuriosityStream is currently hosting a massive Earth Day sale where subscriptions are 41% off, which comes out to well under a dollar a month. And then I also know that any CuriosityStream subscription initiated at curiositystream.com slash HAI includes a free Nebula subscription. And therefore I know that now is the perfect time to sign up if you haven't already. Also on CuriosityStream, you can, for example, learn about how past societies pulled off marvelous projects like the pyramids or the Great Wall of China in ancient engineering. If you're still in the mood for more documentaries after that, you can also check our new Nebula original profiling an Alaskan community struggling to hold on after the shutdown of the cruise ship industry. This Earth Day deal ends this Saturday, so sign up today for a year of CuriosityStream and Nebula for less than a dollar a month at curiositystream.com slash H-A-I.